you are eating bugs. This is one of those episodes that might freak you out a bit. If you don't like to hear about some of the lesser known but kind of yucky realities of life, you might want to skip this one episode. But if you can handle it till the end, you are in for a surprise. This is war. Some really smart biologists stated that humans are massively outnumbered and outgunned by a presence right here on our own planet right now. If there were to be an all-out war and we'd line every human up for battle, we would still be at a serious disadvantage. In fact, they outnumber us 1.4 billion to one. It's a presence we've already been at war with, on and off, for eons. Sometimes we've been seriously decimated by the enemy. They've attacked with disease, chemical warfare, and wiped out crops and destroyed homes. But it's not like humans haven't gotten in some licks of their own. We have employed everything from close quarters combat to chemical warfare and even genetic engineering. Somehow, we've maintained a tenuous and kind of ugly balance of coexistence. But there are still skirmishes and casualties on both sides every day. Why isn't this a breaking news story? Where are the headlines? What is this overwhelming presence? Or should we ask who? Well, I'm happy to tell you. Insects. Like Fleas, mosquitoes, ants, bees, aphids, termites, and so many others. They have been eating our crops, spreading disease, stinging and biting us, even drinking our blood. And they won't be stopping anytime soon. You. I ain't eating no bugs. You probably remember a time when you were a kid and somebody double-dog dared you to eat a worm or a cricket or some other creepy crawly. And heck, maybe you're one of those who never backs down and you can tell us how grasshopper legs taste. <laughs> Not me. I ain't eating no bugs. However, you've probably seen the headlines about how we are all going to be eating more bugs. Because it's good for us and the environment. Or so, this prediction seems to be a sign of the soon to be post apocalyptic existence everyone will share. For others, it's like, yeah, it seems logical and, and environmentally responsible. Pass the mealworms. <laughs> Fact is, a large portion of the world's population has been eating bugs for quite a while. And now, Western civilization seems to be entertaining the whole bugs for dinner thing and it has become a growth industry but there is an uncomfortable reality to know you may have been completely unaware of it but you have been eating bugs your whole life the federal food and drug administration or fda has been regulating the quantity of insects and bug parts that are allowed into everything from vegetables to sugar and flour that's right. FDA says unless there's a whole bunch of grasshopper bits in your green beans, they're just fine. Toss them in the package and seal it up. And I must admit, I don't know how they can measure the amount of crushed bug bodies in a cup of flour, but those little extras are inevitably present. A new day has come. Eating bugs has been going on just about forever. In many parts of the world, bugs are a staple part of the diet. But we here in the Western world haven't been partaking of insects much. At least, not on purpose. But a new day has come. And, well, some, understandably, are not completely comfortable with it. <laughs> Including me. Here's the latest. Now they're talking about adding even more bugs and doing it on purpose. In fact, we've already been doing it for quite a while. Here are just a few examples. 
The shine on that fresh apple, the shimmer on that fine gourmet chocolate, or even just the regular old chocolate, is likely to be from shellac. But not just any old shellac. It's quite likely to be a shellac that comes out of the back end of the female lac bug. <laughs> the wonderful red color in your eyeshadow or lipstick, or the red of your yogurt or ice cream. Well, it could be a dye called carmine or conchineal extract. Basically, it's made of an innumerable amount of the crushed bodies of the itty-bitty cochineal beetle, an insect native to South America. And it is common that in your protein bar or protein shake, well, just remember they are high in amino acids, vitamin B12 and iron. What I'm saying is you might find finely ground, high in protein flour made from the dried out husks of crickets as an ingredient. And then there's the ubiquitous L-cysteine, used as a conditioner for the dough used in bread and all kinds of other baked goods. This L-cysteine might be synthetically produced, but it's also made from human hair, duck feathers, and insect shells. And looking to the future, there are solid plans for high-protein, nutritious, and delicious bugs to become a regular part of so many other food products. Well, there are potentially many little ounce-sized nuggets of wisdom to be uncovered here. But for now, may I suggest just this one. Here's an ounce from our brief consideration of eating bugs. There is a wise old saying from around the butcher shop that goes like this. Nobody wants to see how the sausage is made. This little quip reminds us that it may not be prudent to know absolutely everything. Not that we should keep ourselves blinded to or unconcerned about immoral or unethical things. But we ought to understand that not all that is ethical, moral, or even completely right is perfectly palatable when we expose all the particulars. Hope I haven't ruined your appetite. But no worries. I'm sure none of that insect stuff is in anything you've eaten or put on your face. At least as far as I know. <laughs> That's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Thanks for watching. We appreciate your going along on this little video journey with us. And since you've taken the time to watch the whole thing, would you please go ahead and give us a like, a thumbs up, a, a subscribe, a share it with your friends. We need to convince YouTube that everybody ought to be given a chance to see these videos. And we appreciate your help. Thanks.